Thanks for joining us for City Council Comments. I'm Steve Erickson along with Council Member Brad Griscoviak. Today we're talking about both the May 3rd and our May 17th City Council meetings. Thanks for coming in today. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Steve. We actually wanted to start off the show by talking about something that happened right at the beginning of the month. Uh, we actually broke ground, uh, or city officials did, along with city staff, on the new fire station. That's correct. Fire Station 3, a big new capital project here in Coon Rapids. Uh, it's going to be on the old Cook Arena site right across from uh, Ramsey College and uh, state-of-the-art new facility, an expensive new facility, but it's going to serve us well for many, many years, decades for sure, and long overdue. Yeah, so yeah. local elected officials were out there. We had some of our state reps join us and state uh, senators, and uh, it was kind of fun. Everybody took turns with the shovel and yeah, posing right. for photos. And uh, Yeah, so we broke we broke ground on it, and there was. There was quite a few elected officials on there. One of the reasons why is that there is going to be a regional training aspect to it. Yeah. So... Um, Part of the specialized rescue uh, training is going to happen at that facility, so it's going to be a bit of a regional draw for that, as well as our backup city emergency management center. So there's a lot of real big things going into this new fire station. As well as, that's where they're going to start launching the fireworks <laughs> from the, the roof of the new fire station in uh, 2023. That's hopefully. correct. Well, uh, Cook Arena site has been the uh, spot for the yeah. fireworks launch for the last several years, and it's a great spot because it's right next to Cook Arena and Boulevard Park where we have all the 4th of July celebrations. So the roof yeah, is going to be used for that, and it's going to be a spectacular show from top of that building in 2023. All right. Looking forward to seeing the, the construction progress. Again, it's supposedly going to be done sometime in June of 2023. Right. And there's a lot of things that go into this uh, fire station that, that really don't meet the eye. The big things with this is uh, firefighter safety. There's yeah. a lot of safety aspects into this. Uh, just the way that those uh, firefighters uh, work in the environment that they're in and they come back with the clothing and make sure that everything's clean. And, yeah. and uh, so uh, really looking forward to that. All right. Well, let's jump into our council uh, meetings here. We're going to start off talking about our Tuesday, May 17th city council meeting. Off the top of that, we had actually two proclamations. These are both related to Poppy Day, which is coming up here. Correct. The, uh, the Legion Post 334 and the VFW Post 9625, we kind of did these together, but we have a pop, pop, uh, proclamation yeah. uh, for Poppy Day, and that's coming up on May 27th, and that's uh, a fundraiser for all these uh, various uh, outlets. And uh, so... Um, coming up on Memorial Day 2, of course, where uh, we honor the veterans that have lost their lives uh, defending our freedoms. All right. And I know they sell them around the community. I know they're usually at the, the Cub on Northdale Boulevard and up by the Walmart in Riverdale. So uh, you can get a poppy there. I know they've already been selling them. That's correct. Yeah, there, there's those spots. And I believe, yeah, those, those are correct. Yeah. And probably some other places. Right. But those are the uh, two. Right I know off the top of my hand, I can't remember. All right, moving forward, council approved a temporary on sale uh, strong beer and wine liquor license. This is for the annual 4th of July community celebration. I mean, obviously there's usually alcohol for sale there, but wanted to take this opportunity to let folks that this is coming up here in just a couple weeks. That's right, it's coming up already, can you believe it? Yeah. Uh, seems like we didn't have any spring and now we're talking about the 4th of July, but <laughs> yeah. I think this is, this is great. This is a big community event, of course. We've got the parade, we've got the 5K run. Uh, new this year will be an all-class reunion, and that's gonna be held, I believe, uh, let's see, on the 3rd, July 3rd, uh, from five to 10, and it's yeah. gonna be right there on the grounds of the Ice Center Boulevard Park. All right, they did one of these, I believe, at Sand Creek Park or somewhere else years ago, mm -hmm. and then they're deciding to bring this idea back and they wanna make it an annual event uh, for folks. So go on out there Saturday, or Sunday, I'm sorry, rather, July 3rd, five to 10. Uh, the celebration is three days this year. It was scaled back to two last year, right. but back to a three-day celebration this year, July 2nd through the 4th. You can find the full list of events on the city's website, which is Coon Rapids MN. Gov. Great community event. Looking forward to a big, uh, big turnout at this year's. For sure. Uh, we have one other item here. Accept the right of entry agreement with Ridgecrest Coon Rapids mm -hmm. LLC. Mm -hmm. I don't usually talk about <laughs> right of entry agreements, but you wanted to talk about this because this is actually some I, construction that's going I on. I did. It, it's in Ward 1 and it's in Riverdale, so it's pretty pretty visible. People yeah. have been asking me about it. What happened to the Golden Corral building? Why did they take that down? It looked like a, a perfectly fine building. But uh, a new ownership in that area, and they have decided to uh, take that down and build in. There's going to be Two brand new buildings in there and three businesses or so, including a couple of restaurants. So uh, it's great to see uh, new development coming into Coon Rapids. Always a good sign for our economy. Yeah, definitely. This will be a, actually a Cafe Zupas, which I drove by another one. I think there's one down in Bloomington. or I drove by it somewhere. So this is a, the, a new one here in Coon Rapids. And then Mod Pizza, which is one of the first in this region. 
as well, and then Chapter Aesthetic Studio. Yeah. So that's what will be built on the corner there. Correct. You know, people are always asking us, you know, let's get more restaurants into Coon Rapids. Yes. So I'm very happy to see the two new uh, restaurant developments are coming in there. Definitely. Sure. And then we just recently also had the demolition of the old Pedersen floral site on the boulevard. Correct. And U-Haul is expanding onto that site. They are, yeah. Pedersen floral has kind of been an eyesore on Coon yeah. Rapids Boulevard for a long time. So the U-Haul is expanding onto that site mm -hmm. and uh, very well uh, received by the community in that area as well yeah. because it has been an eyesore and, and been some problems over the last few years. So that's going to be a nice new development right on Coon Rapids Boulevard. Yeah, good to see some progress there. Absolutely. All right, moving forward, council adopted uh, two resolutions relating to labor agreements. Uh, one is for our firefighters and one is for our police officers. Uh, correct. Both of these labor agreements are with the, with the unions that represent the firefighters and, and the police. And uh, we're glad to get these behind us. Uh, these uh, negotiations went well this year. Uh, both uh, contracts call for a 3% uh, cost of living increase. With the firefighters, there's a slight adjustment to the captain's pay rate. Mm -hmm. And with the uh, police officers, there's a, uh, I think an 85 cent an hour rate increase uh, that's gonna be a base increase. And the reason we had to do this, we have to remain competitive uh, in the market for, for police and fire. Uh, uh, Coon Rapids kind of has a high standard for both police and fire, and we want to make sure that we uh, attract and retain the caliber of uh, firefighter and police officers that we want in our community, and this is one, one way that we can do that. All right, like I said, we do need to remain strong in the recruitment. There's a lot of folks recruiting police officers right now at various cities around the metro. There's a lot of people recruiting, and the pool of uh, qualified candidates yeah. is not as large as it used to be. So we want to make sure that we are attracting yeah. uh, the personnel that we want to have all right. Protecting us. Yeah. Moving forward, council adopted a resolution uh, accepting plans and specifications. This is for the roof replacement at both the West Water Treatment Plant and the East Water Treatment Plant. Correct. So this is a continuation of some uh, maintenance that we've been doing over the last few years. We actually fell a little bit behind yeah. in our routine maintenance, uh, and these are our big infrastructure projects. So for this year, we're putting on the roofs, replacing the roofs on the buildings themselves. We've already done work to the reservoir tanks. Uh, we've already done work to the HVAC and some of the chemical uh, mixing rooms and things like that. So this, again, is just more of uh, long-term maintenance to keep those facilities up and running well for all of our residents. All right. That's all we had to talk about on our May 17th meeting. Moving back now to our first meeting of the month, which was held on May 3rd, uh, just the day after that fire station groundbreaking. Right. Uh, we had a presentation to start off there, which was pretty cool. Uh, this was presenting the Police Reserves Academy. Uh, that's right. So this year we had several 22 candidates uh, that uh, on the Volunteer Police Reserve Officers Program. And so these, uh, these are volunteers, yeah. and they assist uh, with police, and they do a lot of really great things in our community, and we're really uh, fortunate to have so many this year. I thought it was interesting this year when these uh, graduates were uh, announced, yeah. uh, Chief Wise, our police Chief Wise, introduced them all and mentioned that that's how he got his start in, in police and law enforcement. He was actually a volunteer uh, back in the day. Uh, with the same program and uh, lo and behold has become our police chief here in Coon Rapids. So a great program and uh, very happy to have as many candidates as we had this year. I think there were seven or eight this yeah, year. That graduated from the program and right. uh, like you said they do good work. They they give free hours to the city and uh, uh, quite a few of them give a lot of hours of their time. So appreciate that and yep. uh, it was fun to see them. They do and, and, and you'll see those folks uh, on, on, on events around the city. Mm -hmm. So you'll see them uh, over the 4th of July the, yep. at, the, uh, at the grounds and the celebration yep. that we have there. You'll see them out at the uh, dam when we have yep. those uh, concerts in the parks and things like that. Just a, a lot of service provided to this City yeah, I think they direct traffic for after football games, things yeah, like that. Yeah, the list goes well. on and on, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah valuable asset. All right. Uh, Mayor Jerry Cook read a proclamation uh, declaring National Public Works Week. He did, and uh, <laughs> Public Works, there's a lot going on there behind the scenes, of yeah. course. So yeah. there, that's, you know, it's a big part of Coon Rapids and the infrastructure, everything from our roads and our bridges and our yeah. water and our sewer and everything like that. So it's uh, he read the proclamation, uh, our Public Works Director was there and uh, also kind of coordinated into the uh, Public Works Open House that was just held this last Saturday yeah. uh, at the Open House. So if you didn't make it this year, make sure that you plan to uh, make that out next year. Yeah, this is the first time since 2019 because of COVID. Right. Uh, we didn't have it the last two years. So looks like they had a pretty good turnout and uh, right. 
some decent weather this past weekend. Finally, some decent weather. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Council also approved the consent agenda, and one of those items we wanted to talk about, we have a couple actually, but the first is announcing the 2022 summer concert schedule. Uh, that is quickly approaching here in about a month. It is. We've been doing a couple weeks. <laughs> right, yeah. I think it kicks off. The first one is going to be on June 9th yeah. out at uh, Coon Rapids Regional Dam. So uh, these we've been doing this for, for a number of years, and I think there's nine a week. Uh, nine concerts yep. total over over the summer and that's free admission yep. uh, free admission into the event itself free admission into the park so yep. Coon Rapids or excuse me Anoka County waves the uh, entrance into the yep. park for those facilities and you get to hear live music there's uh, there's food served out there it's just a great family event if you haven't been there uh, please try to get out there you you'll really enjoy it great for the whole family yeah like you said June 9th Thursday June 9th is the first concert so the castaways which is a variety band. Uh, 7 p.m. is start time. Like you said, concessions are available. And this is put on by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission, uh, along with some support from the Community Strength Foundation, I believe. That's correct. It's great for pointing that out. I mean, a lot goes into coordinating this, and our Arts Commission folks pretty much take the lead on this. Absolutely. All right. Another item we wanted to talk about was the approval of the service agreement with the Alexandra House. True. Uh, we have these service agreements in place and we have for a number of years, but uh, Alexander House is a nonprofit shelter organization and they provide services for all of Anoka County, including Coon Rapids. In fact, they're the county's only woman's shelter and they provide advocacy, support, uh, uh, education opportunities and things like that. And we're glad to support them uh, here in our community. All right. And the donations about just like 12500 I believe, is I believe the city's is, contribution. Yeah. And that's gone up a little bit over the years. Yeah. So I think we're at 12500 all right. And the third item I wanted to talk about from the consent agenda was accepting a donation for a park bench. It's always nice to see these. I do. I like to acknowledge this because uh, these are donations uh, from residents in our community. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, the Rood family, uh, in, in memory of uh, Audrey Rood, uh, uh, donated a park bench. And this one's going to go into the Crooked Lake Park. And I'm sure it's going to get a lot of use. It's yeah. a very popular park out there. You can sit and overlook the lake, and that's just a great setting for that. So we thank the uh, the Root family for that donation. It's it's about a $700 donation uh, when it all adds in. Yeah, like I said, nice thing to have in her memory, and nice thing for people that use the park to be able to sit down and uh, relax. That's for sure. All right, council adopted a resolution uh, supporting the recycling center expansion project. This is to secure some matching funds or grant money. That's correct. Well, this has been in the works for a little bit, uh, a little bit that we are going to expand the recycling yeah. center. Uh, it, it's heavily used, uh, not only by Coon Rapids, but by a lot of other uh, surrounding uh, communities as well. Yeah. So what this does is it just reaffirms it had to have a formalized uh, resolution in front of the council that we were moving forward with this project to receive matching funds from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. So they are, with this, uh, with this uh, adoption, uh, at that meeting, we will be eligible for $317,000 of matching funds from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. There's going to be uh, renovations mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the circulation flow that yeah. goes through there. There's going to be some covered storage and then a remodeling to the main building. So some, okay. some pretty big improvements. All right. And it'd be nice to see that start happening. I know mm -hmm. it's been delayed a little bit. Right. And of course, with all the backlog with construction stuff and prices going up it's right. prices and uh, finding the right materials yeah. at this time so yep we will be seeing it happen it will be happening uh, this summer okay uh, speaking of summer it would not be summer also without <laughs> a little bit of road construction uh, we want to talk about street reconstruction council adopted the assessments uh, for our projects that are going on this summer Correct. Two, two main road projects this year, uh, both in the Northwest Metro and primarily in the same area. So if you're over on the Northwest side of town, Round Lake Boulevard, probably around from 117th up to 123rd or so, mm -hmm. you're going to see road construction projects over there. So we're redoing uh, 4.2 miles of in one area and 3.6 miles in another area. And these are uh, complete road reconstruction. Yeah. So we're going right down to the dirt, taking all that concrete out of there. There is some work that's going to be done to the uh, water systems in there, some valves and things like that. And then all new curb uh, all the way through there and brand new pavement. So it's going to be like a brand new development in there. A lot of, we stay pretty proactive yeah. on the roads in Coon Rapids as, as our residents will, will notice. 
Yeah, and they rate them, and the, you guys kind of have a plan and know maybe what's happening next year and the year after. Right. If anybody's interested in seeing maybe what the upcoming streets are, there is a map and more information, I believe, on the city's website on that. Right. So these contracts were actually awarded, and the work's already been done. So these these means in here were just adopting the assessments, yeah. which Coon Rapids does assess for this type of work, but it is a pretty low assessment in terms of the uh, in terms of looking at other cities and how we assess. Okay, and I believe it's believe it's around two thousand twenty two hundred dollars somewhere in there. I think it's about twenty two hundred dollars per residential uh, yeah. home, and then a uh, little bit different calculation for townhomes and for apartments. Yeah, so big chunk of money for most folks. It's it's over a ten year period if you need it. Correct. Assessed on your taxes, so uh, obviously, like you said, got to keep up with the streets. They eventually uh, oh, absolutely need to be redone. Yep, staying in front of this is a money well spent, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the entire council. All right. That is all we had to talk about from our first meeting of the month. Uh, before we go here, a couple other things uh, coming up. We have our summer in the city meetings. Uh, it's that time of the year where it feels like we're either going to a concert or a, a meeting in the park or a council meeting. Uh, but those kick off on June 14th. That's correct. There'll be four of them again this year. And uh, this is a great opportunity to meet not only the city council in your neighborhood, because we actually go out to these parks and uh, we meet everybody. Yeah. There's a there's an agenda there. And it also will bring in a lot of the support staff yep. in different departments. The parks department will be there and the public works department will be there. Our water folks will be there. Our sustainability group will all be out there. So come on out, uh, meet these uh, different people that support all the services in Coon Rapids, as well as uh, the city council members themselves. All right, and if that's not enough, there's free ice cream, right? <laughs> there's always free ice cream, hoping for a nice warm day so we can enjoy that ice cream. Yeah, so come on out, ask your questions of the council and the staff and the various departments. Again, the first one is taking place on Tuesday, June 14th. Gets underway at 6.30 and goes to about 8 o'clock, and that one will be at Al Flynn Park. Uh, again, the full list is on the city's website. Right. It's going to be at Al Flynn Park, and uh, that park is slated for renovation in the future. Final plans haven't been uh, put out yet, but you'll see a lot of information about the designs that we're thinking about for Al Flynn Park. So we'd love to see you out at Al Flynn Park for sure uh, to, uh, to hear your feedback on those renovations. All right. And then one other thing we want to mention is filings for public office are now open, and they are open until May 31st at 5 p.m. Uh, we actually have three seats on the city council that are up for re-election this fall. That's correct. Seat uh, Ward 3, uh, 5, and the mayor is up for re-election as well. Uh, Ward 3 is uh, up for re-election. Uh, council member Pablo Hernandez Jr. was appointed to that seat, so he has to run for his full first uh uh, election. Yep. And in Ward 5, uh, Council Member Brad Johnson's term is up and he is not seeking re-election for, uh, for the City Council, so that's going to be an open seat. And the Mayor is seeking re-election. All right. That's so again, if you're interested, uh, you do have to sign or file an affidavit of candidacy. There's like a $10 filing fee. Uh, you can get more on the City's website on that as well. Uh, and uh, contact the City Clerk if you need that. But again, the filing deadline, if you're interested, you need to file by uh, Tuesday, May 31st at 5 p.m. That's correct. At City Hall, talk to our city clerk. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. We're coming up here. It's hard to believe Memorial Weekend. <laughs> right. We have a movie in the park this Friday night on, we on Memorial Weekend. Right. Uh, Encanto is playing around 8.45 p.m. So if you Sand Creek Park. Yeah. If you didn't right. see that, head out there. And then uh, the Splash Pad at Boulevard Plaza is also supposed to open this weekend. Finally, right? It doesn't yeah. seem like it would be opening because we had such uh, poor weather all spring, but it will be opening. It's a great park, a lot of great uh, use that happens all summer long out there. Yeah, so it feels like summer. We're getting into that summer period here. And I've been reading a lot from this, which is the printed copy of the mm. new newsletter. This will be coming out in mailboxes uh, around June 1st. June 2nd is when it's being mailed. So pick it up. A lot of the information we talked about today is in this 20-page uh, newsletter, so check it out. Definitely check out a newsletter. That is improving all the time. There's all kinds of great information in the newsletter, as well as on our city website. Yeah. Uh, you know, Check our website. A lot of the things that we talked about right here are on the city website, and if you have any questions or anything like that, all the access and the numbers are there for you can reach us and yeah. let us know how we're doing. All right. That's all I have, unless you have <laughs> anything else you want to add. I think we're good. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in today and talking to us. Thank you at home for watching, and we'll see you back here again after our two meetings in June.